Some call it pointless, others call it incredibly pointless. I'm of course talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. With the Hall of Fame ceremonies going on this week, I thought it would be a perfect time to look at the rare times an artist has actually stood up to the Rock Hall and told them to shove it. That's exactly what Steve Miller did half a decade ago and we're going to explore the full story in today's video. In 2016, Steve Miller would be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with other overdue acts including Cheap Trick, Chicago and Deep Purple. Also being inducted that year was rap group NWA. The Rock Hall has long been criticized for ignoring hugely influential acts, having a mysterious governing body that chooses who gets in and who doesn't, in addition to giving fans limited say, and of course inducting rap and hip hop acts who aren't really considered rock and roll. The run up to Steve Miller's induction seemed like any other year. Even the ceremony seemed to go off without a hitch, despite Miller's gentle criticism during his induction speech saying, I encourage you to keep expanding your vision to be more inclusive of women, since his induction year had no women. He would also push the hall to support music education. Then everything changed as he talked to the press backstage. The person who tries to interrupt him was the publicist for the Rock Hall. The whole process needs to be changed from the top to the bottom. Doesn't need to be this hard. There's nothing fancy going on out there uh, that requires all of this stuff. They need to get their legal work straight. They need to respect the artists they say they're honoring, which they don't. I don't have any of my paperwork as signed. I have no, no licensing agreements with these people. They're trying to steal footage. They're trying to make me indemnify them. When they told me I was inducted, they said, you ha can have two tickets, one for your wife and one for yourself. Want another one? It's $10,000. Sorry, that's the way it goes. They said, I'm playing here. What about my band? What about their wives? What about... Th they make this so unpleasant that they came this close. They came, you, no, we're not going to wrap this one up. I'm going to wrap you up. You go sit down over there and learn something. So here's, here's what you need to know. This is how close this whole show came to not happening because of the way the artists were actually being treated right now. So I'll wrap it up right now. Following his rant backstage, The Rock Hall put out a statement that read, Rock and roll can ignite many opinions. It's what makes it so great. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was honored to induct Steve Miller tonight and congratulates him. Following the ceremony, he would be interviewed by Rolling Stone magazine, and during that interview, he took some more time to slam the Rock Hall for being an amateur production. He would also slam the Hall of Fame over time constraints put on artists during their performances, what they can say, and who they can invite. Each inductee gets two free tickets, with subsequent tickets costing around $10,000 each. He would elaborate further on his frustrations with the exchange with Rolling Stone going as follows. The interviewer would ask, what do you mean by amateur production? To which he responded, 100,000 phone calls, the contract work, the licensing still isn't signed and isn't complete. Everybody is kind of a dick and an a-hole. And every artist you talk to will tell you that. You're lucky that everybody didn't F and walk out. It was very, very close. If you're an investigative reporter, get effing busy, okay? God enough, he'd say. He would go on to criticize the committee who selects the inductees for not being transparent and saying they should be replaced. Three weeks after his induction ceremony, Steve Miller would appear on the Howard Stern Show on Sirius XM, and inducting Miller that year would be the Black Keys, which he also took issue with, telling the radio host, I was never introduced to the Black Keys. I didn't know who they were personally. I walked in through security and there's this guy, Black Keys frontman Dan Arbach, looking at me, making goo goo eyes at me or something. I walk up to him and I go, what are you doing tonight? And he says, I'm reading your speech. I say, oh great, I can't wait to get the F out of here. And I didn't know who he was. The Black Keys would also make their feelings known with guitarist of frontman Dan Arbach telling Rolling Stone, I don't know, we read a lot of things and we got really uncomfortable feeling when we first met Steve. He had no idea who we were, no idea, and he made no effort to even, he didn't even figure out who we were, he'd say. So why did Miller show up to the Rock Hall if he had so many issues with it? Well, he would tell Rolling Stone magazine that he simply came for the fans. NWA's Ice Cube shared a similar sentiment as Miller, stating that NWA didn't get on stage to perform because, and I quote, we really didn't feel like we were supported enough to do the best show we could put on. During Miller's interview with Howard Stern, he would claim he was planning on investigating the Rock Hall, but the story seemed to die down a few weeks after that. 
The Rock Hall for their part claims to be transparent, releasing a list of nominees each year, allowing fans to vote. According to the Rock Hall's website, they claim that the body who votes on who should be inducted each year is made up of 800 artists, historians, and members of the music industry. Their website reads, and I quote, factors such as an artist's musical influence on other artists, length and depth of their career, and the body of work, innovation, and superiority in style and technique are taken into consideration. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.